हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू वेदर कास्ट टूडेज एजुकेशन वीडियो इज ऑन मेजो स्केल एंड सब मेजो स्केल सिस्टम्स एंड द इम्पैक्ट ऑन वेदर एंड रेनफॉल पैटर्न वी ऑल नो दैट ओशन एंड एटमोसफियर हैव रेंज ऑफ स्केल्स एंड दीज सिस्टम्स वेरी इन टाइम एज वेल एज इन स्पेस सो इफ यू लुक एट अ टिपिकल टाइम एंड स्पेशल मैप वी सी वी कैन put different types of systems in this map starting from the turbulent processes like convection all the way to eddies uh, rossby waves and seasonal cycle like the monsoon uh, and in general this map can be divided into two halves one is sub meso scale which have spatial scale of the order of 10 kilometers or lower and time scale is of the order of one day or less and then you have the meso scale and synoptic scales which have spatial scale greater than 10 km and time scale is greater than one day so this is very uh, typical because you have these uh, small scale small scale vortices small scale waves like internal waves which don't last for more than a day the convective patterns are also only a few hours long uh, but on the other hand the rossby waves the el nino and all those monsoonal cycles they have a very large time stamp correct they uh, exist of the order of few weeks to months so this is the basic premise of sub meso scale and meso scales so first let us talk about meso scales like i already said generally have a higher spatial um, uh, resolution which is greater than 10 km and the temporal scale is greater than one day and they play a very crucial role in governing the weather dynamics examples include but they are not limited to the rossby wave kelvin waves mixed gravity waves that we seen that we see in uh, atmosphere and ocean mrg is the mixed rossby gravity wave then you have these large scale eddies and then you also have the frontal systems so if we go a little bit deeper the frontal system is nothing but a cold front or a warm front here in this image i'm showing you a cold front wherein what is happening is that the cold mass of air is blowing and then that uplifts the warm air leading to formation of these cloud bands and these frontal systems are mesoscale systems because they are uh, few kilometers long like 30 40 50 kilometers long and they occur on a uh, time scale of around 2 2 to 3 days okay so these are the bigger fronts okay these are the frontal systems that i am talking about here then the so this is how you can uh, identify whether it's a, a frontal system basically you look at the map the yellow is cold air uh, white is warm air because it's moist this is dry so it intrudes and then it leads to formation of clouds okay our frontal system can be found in satellite images by looking at the color maps then the other example of a mesoscale process or a system is the eddies and low pressure which we can easily identify in the models uh, these large scale circulating cyclonic systems are the eddies in northern hemisphere you see these eddies also a low pressure or a depression uh, we can call that and again if you look at the time scales of these low pressures and depressions this is of the order of 4 to 5 days okay so these fall under the mesoscale category and uh, finally you have these mesoscale eddies in the ocean as well you see these are the eddies like nice circular structures length scales are definitely much much larger than 10 km and these eddies can stay like this for months all right so uh, we are clear that these mesoscale processes have a large time stamp and they play a very crucial role in governing the atmosphere and ocean interaction or coupling right now if you want to learn little bit more then uh, if you look compare the ocean uh, mesoscale processes and the atmospheric mesoscale processes then the ocean mesoscale processes are smaller than the atmospheric mesoscale processes in the sense that the time scale uh, sorry the length scales are much smaller in ocean the length scales are of the order of few kilometers 10 to 200 kilometers whereas in atmosphere these processes are much larger they can extend all the way up to 1000 kilometers right like these trade winds the trade winds travel from all the way from the pacific to uh, indian ocean so they have a very large um, spatial scale okay therefore ocean is very difficult to model because the resolution would be ne uh, needed uh, to resolve these mesoscale systems is much higher all right that is one thing that we have to understand so mesoscale processes in ocean are difficult to model or resolve the second thing is that these mesoscale length processes also vary with latitude 
So if you look at this particular chart, if you look at this black line, then you see that with latitude, the mesoscale process is changing. So what I'm showing here is something known as a primary mesoscale process. So it is easy to find out the length scale of a primary mesoscale process. So there are different mesoscale processes, primary and secondary. The primary one is the one which is the most important to resolve. Obviously, the secondary ones are also important. But using theory, we can find out what is the length scale of a primary mesoscale process. Okay? And that is based on that only we set the model resolutions. Okay. Uh, so the primary mesoscale process near equator or near the tropical uh, tropical zone is around 80 to 90 kilometers long and these are the eddies that I am talking about or the currents like the East Indian coastal current or anticyclonic and cyclonic eddies that you see in ocean all right and as you go towards the poles the length of these mesoscale processes changes okay so if you want to set up a model then you have to choose between you have to come up with the right scale uh, or the resolution to model all the processes that occur from equator all the way to poles because it's a global model right so you are setting up a global model so based on this typically the models the global models the resolution ranges from 10 kilometer to 25 kilometer okay depending on the type of weather model uh, so basically a weather model is nothing but or climate model is nothing but it has the atmospheric part ocean part and the land part and all of them feed to each other like the physics of each of these uh, so ocean talks to atmosphere atmosphere talks to land and land again talks to ocean this is how the basic framework is and the typical resolution is from 10 to 25 kilometers so all these models are able to resolve the mesoscale processes and they're able to um, provide the physics of these processes and hence the pattern of weather systems and rainfall so why are we having so much variability in weather then, right? If the models are able to capture the mesoscale processes, then where does the problem lie? So the problem lies in the sub-mesoscale processes. So generally they have a very low spatial resolution, less than 10 kilometer, and temporal scale is also less than one day. They have very high variability when it comes to weather dynamics and high variab variability is present both in spatial and temporal scales. So let us look at some examples of sub-mesoscale processes. They are basically small vortices convective plumes or filaments that we see in ocean and atmosphere okay so the reason these sub mesoscale processes are important is because if you look at the spatial resolution it is less than 10 kilometer and the typical resolution of models is 10 kilometer and above so definitely they are missing out the sub mesoscale processes they are not resolving them and the sub mesoscale processes play a very very vital role so here i am showing some of the examples these are the convective plumes as the plume rises it mixes with the ambient and it kind of intrudes into the ambient correct and this is a typical convective plume pattern then you have these small filaments these filaments actually basically these are uh, seen in the ocean maps and these you see these filaments they actually cause a lot of mixing and they affect the sea surface temperature and if the sea surface temperature is affected then the coupling between the ocean and atmosphere is also affected Correct. So that's why these sub-mesoscale processes or systems are very very important uh, integral part of weather dynamics and models. Okay. Since models are not able to resolve, this is one of the reasons why we have a very high variability okay, in weather system predictions and the rainfall predictions. Okay. And these are the vortices, small vortices that I talked about. Okay the vortices, the lens scales of these vortices is typically less than 10 kilometers. So let us look at some of the problem creators in the sense that what are the sub scale systems that lead to uh, high variability in weather and uh, how do they uh, lead to extreme weather events which models don't uh, capture or they are unable to predict most of the times. So one of the very important uh, sub scale system is a localized vortex formation. So you have these very, very localized vortex formations and these are as a result of a trough. So there is an offshore trough during the monsoon that interacts with the upper air circulation, which is typically, typically known as UAC and it leads to the formation of these local vortex. And these dynamics of the vortex are very complex because this vortex is a funnel shaped structure which leads to updraft from the bottom and since there is a high pressure on the top, it leads to a funnel shaped system. But there will be, as soon as this vortex forms, there will be, there will be a lot of updraft and leading to intense 
cloud bands formation and they can dump as much as 100 to 120 mm of frames in less than 3 hours and if you you have to remember that these submersible scale systems have a very small time scale so they form very quickly and they also dissipate very quickly okay so in the small amount of time the in the, the kind of intense rains that they can produce is very high okay so that's why they are a problem creator and most of the time by the time by the uh, time the event is over the models have not captured that all right so that's why we have high variability and that too during monsoon these kind of submersible scale systems are very unique and they form very very often all right the other problem creator is the submersible scale uh, turbulence during thunderstorms so you have these updraft and downdrafts and they lead to they cause a lot of turbulence and if you look at remember the first slide turbulence is less than 10 kilometers in space okay and it is very quick event it, it is it has a time scale of only less than few uh, one hour or even less like minutes so these turbulence updraft lead to a lot of um, convective cloud formation and these can lead to a very intense thunderstorms okay so this is the other problem creator so submersible scale systems play a very important role in thunderstorm formation so how to interpret submersible scale dynamics since model usually don't resolve submersible scale features um, but I mean the models have a very good handle on mesoscale dynamics like wave movement, front movement, etc. But they don't have very good um, handle on the submesoscale. All right. So let us not look at the ocean because in ocean it is very hard to interpret the submesoscale dynamics due to lack of significant features. But in atmosphere we can. It can be interpolated. Okay, because we know that submesoscale play a very crucial role in thunderstorms and monsoon offshore troughs. Okay, or the local vortex formation. All right. So for what do, what do I mean by monsoon offshore trough? You please look at my previous video. Okay, I have explained there what is the monsoon offshore trough. So if there is an offshore trough forming and there is a thunderstorm event, then you can be absolutely sure that there is a submersible scale dynamics which is going to be inbuilt in that system. And most of the times, these will give rise to intense rainfall events. Okay, so that's why we are interpolating. Okay, we are not predicting, but we are interpolating that when these kind of systems form, like offshore trough or convective systems form then submersible scale process will be embedded in them one very interesting thing is an internal gravity wave so these are the lee waves which get trapped near the guard sections and they lead to very intense rain events correct so you look out for these lee waves which are forming and these usually form if there is an offshore trough hanging around due to the formation of a bay of bengal system and hence you have to be uh, you can interpolate that okay heavy or very heavy rainfall events are likely to happen okay so we can only say with a 70 to 80 percent probability if these kind of systems are forming then there is a chance that the submersible scale dynamics is embedded in them and there is a high chance of a very intense rainfall event all right similarly when there is a convective front or when there is convection you look for the strong convergence like there is a very strong convergence of the warm air and cold air okay and there is this intense uh, convergence zone which has formed Okay, so you kind of look for these intense convergence zones and those are the convergence lines where you can expect heavy thunderstorms okay so this that's why i'm saying that we can interpolate we cannot predict but we can kind of interpolate based on the dynamics which is happening okay so if these kind of thunderstorm events or convergence is happening then a submissive scale process is likely to be embedded in that system okay so uh, unless we go to resolutions less than 10 kilometer in global models we won't be able to resolve these submersible scale processes until that time we will have to live with this kind of uncertainty but one thing that we can do is like i said we can interpolate based on the process we can say that okay there is a submersible scale part that may be coming into picture right now okay so uh, i hope this video was useful and you have learned something good about mesoscale and submersible scale systems uh, so please share this video and also subscribe to my channel I'll be back with more educational videos as and when I find an interesting topic, uh, I will post them. Okay. Thank you for uh, watching this video and please subscribe to my channel. Bye.